Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be having a look at PMD. PMD or Programming Mistake Detector is a static code analysis tool. Uh, it scans your source code to identify potential issues. Um, these issues can be code smells, unused variables or even possible bugs. Essentially, it looks at your code before it's even compiled or run to catch those errors early. By highlighting these problems, PMD helps you maintain cleaner, more maintainable code and can save time by catching common mistakes well before they cause runtime errors. PMD does more than just finding bugs. It can also enforce coding standards and best practices. It can also help teams write consistent, maintainable code. It can detect code duplicates, measure code complexity, and even offer recommendations on how to refactor messy code. By integrating it with build tools and IEDEs, PMD streamlines the workflow, automatically checking the code quality on every commit or build, thus ensuring issues get caught and fixed early. Today we are going to try to integrate it in our Spring Boot project, so let's see how we can do that. So here we have a simple Spring Boot project, so it's a starter application, we are just depending on the Spring Boot starter web. Uh, please keep in mind that what we're going to be doing today uh, does not really necessarily need Spring, um, so it can also be done with plain Java. Um, in, to have a quick look at our source code, so we have uh, one package with the, some user classes here. So we have a DTO with the user DTO, we have a repository, some controller and a service. So if you look at the user DTO, it's a simple one, it has ID and a username. Um, constructor and some getters and setters. So nothing special here. Then looking at the repository, we can see we have uh, just some map which represents our in-memory database and we have uh, one method which can get us a user uh, by ID. Uh, keep in mind that we can introduce some issues here. So like for example, removing this um, uh, final keyword on the user DTO or uh, like what Ordi IntelliJ is complaining about that uh, this local variable DTO is redundant because we can immediately just return this directly. So this, these are the things that we expect PMD to detect for us. Um, then moving on to the controller, we have one endpoint, we are injecting the service here and we are calling a method um, on the service called get user from DB. Uh, to this method we are passing in the ID and it's also expect us a username which is now so this is also something that we kind of want to um, detect with PMD because this is a yeah a bad practice we don't really we have a parameter which is uh, not used um, then we have some try catch block where we are yeah interacting with our repository we are again returning our DTO but we could probably just return this directly and you notice that our cat uh, our catch so our catch block is empty this is also something that we want to uh, yeah kind of uh, figure out and then we have one method which is not used so maybe we can also detect this Okay, so this is our source code. So this is what we have. It's just a dummy application, so nothing really important. Um, you can do something like this uh, or something else. It doesn't really matter. So as long as you have some code which can be analyzed. Okay, great. Now that we are went over this, we go back to our build Gradle uh, KTS file. So we are using Kotlin here. Um, let's jump into it. So it's in our, in our root. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to enable the PMD plugin. So what we can do, uh, on top of this file, uh, we can add a PMD here. You can see that uh, immediately I just uh, get a, yeah, a pop-up to refresh my Gradle dependency, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, also, if you just look at this file, you can see that I have nothing uh, special imported for PMD, so I don't have any implementation here for PMD or anything like this. Um, this comes out of the box, so as soon as you uh, start your project, you will have this plugin available, you just need to enable it. Uh, you don't need any potential and any uh, additional dependencies here. You would need some if you actually want to create custom rules, but maybe we'll look into that in the future. Okay, great. So we have our plugin um, enabled. Uh, now we can actually configure it a bit. So what we can do here is if we say PMD and then open up uh, some braces, we get this PMD extension so we can actually add some uh, configurations for it. So what we want to do now is we want to say which version we want to use. So we can say tool um, version and let's say we want to use 7.10.0. So this needs to be actually a valid version um, that we can use and this is the one that we want to that we want to use. Okay, great. Um, then another thing that we need in order to use the PMDs, we need to 
uh, configure so-called rule sets. So basically these are just a set of rules that we want to apply on our code base. Uh, so if you say rule sets and this uh, expects us a list, so we say a list of, and this is where you provide list of some rule sets. So they are just, um, yeah, passed in as strings uh, and you can separate them by uh, by a comma so you can provide, uh, provide multiple uh, rules here. Now the question is, how do you actually know which rules to, to actually set here? So what, what can you actually set here? What do you point to? Um, this you can actually figure out from the PMD's website. So they have a really nice documentation where they have a bunch of rules listed, bunch of rule sets. So those are the, like the commonly used ones. So you can have a look at those and um, try to, yeah, try to, to, to play around with them. I'm going to add few now. So just so that we can get an idea how it looks like. Now I have added a uh, few rules here. So as you can see, I have to provide a category and then I'm saying it's Java because we want to analyze Java code and then some XML file. So one is called error prone, the other one is called code style and these are, this one is called documentation. So these are the, the, the files that you can actually find in the documentation I mentioned on the PMD's website. I'll leave a link in the description so you can have a look at those. And with this, you actually get those rules which PMD will try to apply to your code to validate it. Now, um, what the next step is to actually uh, load our Gradle changes. But before we do that, we actually want to make sure um, that we can see these rules somewhere. So we actually uh, want to display them in the in the console output. So the way we do this is we're going to uh, yeah, extend this task that we have. So we can say uh, tasks then with, with uh, type. This type is then going to be PMD. And then again with the braces, now we can say uh, is a console output and we say true. So this is what we can uh, configure here. So if you open up this one, so I just middle mouse clicked it or you can go like control left click on the PMD here, um, you'll end up in this abstract class and you can see what kind of things you can configure. And um, this is the console output that we configured. And for example, what we can also do is we can say if we wanna, I think this is already here, or maybe somewhere deeper, um, but doesn't matter. Um, what we can say is if we wanna fail the build. So we can say is, um, wait, uh, how exactly is it called? Ah, sorry, it's actually not here. I'm lying, it's in the uh, here. So you can say is ignore failures and then you can say true or false. So basically, um, should you fail the build uh, when you did when P, PMD detects some violations, um, you want to say true or false. So let's say um, false. I don't want it uh, to uh, fail the build. I just want to to uh, print them out. Okay. So now we are refreshing our dependencies, and then the way we execute this is if we go to our Gradle here, and within the root of the project we have our tasks, and then we have other, and then we have this uh, PMD main for our production code, and then PMD test for our test code. So if I uh, double click this one, it will execute it for us, and then in the output we should get uh, some uh, failures. So you can see here it's actually quite a lot. Um, I, it's listing all of the oops. Uh, it's listing all of the failures that we have. So for example, here it's saying uh, PMD application. So it's even analyzing this uh, class that I have here, but let's ignore those quickly. Uh, user DTO, okay, comment required. Um, class comments are required. So basically telling us that the class comment is required. So if I jump to this one, you can see that I uh, don't have any comments here on this class and this is something that it uh, expects. Um, there are then a bunch of things uh, being listed here and we also get a nice report which you can then open up and uh, see more or less this same thing just in the some HTML. So the reason why we're seeing it in the console is because we configured it like that uh, with this parameter. But if we put this uh, to false or remove it, then we would not get this part. Um, but you might think, okay, yeah, this is nice, but this is a lot and I don't actually want to implement all of these rules. Can I be a bit more specific? Can I do it somehow? Uh, differently and you can actually. Um, we can show it in a different way. So if I uh, uh, comment out these just for an easier um, easier usage and then I run it again, um, we should get uh, again a bunch of errors but less than before because we now removed um, some of them. Ah, okay, maybe, okay. Uh, I 
messed it up a bit because the error prone is actually just uh, looking at this one. So this, this is the only error that we have from the error prone. But if we look at the code style, uh, then uh, maybe here we can uh, get a bit more. So and with the code style, you can see that we get a bunch of other errors. But let's say I don't want to, uh, I don't want all of them. I want one, let's say. And the one that I want is called uh, method arguments could be final. So I can just pick it up from here. I want to use this one. I paste it here. You can also see all of these uh, mm, rules, which are part of this code style category. Uh, you can see them in the on the web page. So if I run this again, I should only have uh, two violations, one from coming from the error prone and the one coming from the code style. So if I run it again, okay. So I was wrong about uh, violations, but we have two types of violations. This is what I was uh, talking about. So we can see that here, we are now only analyzing the method argument could be final, which is what you expect. And then we also have this empty catch block, uh, which is coming from, from this one. But you might say, okay, I actually want a bit more from this code style. I don't want just this one. I want um, I don't know, local variable could be final because this is one of them. So we can duplicate this. Uh, we typed here local variable could be final. And if I execute this one, we should now also get violations that are coming from here. And there they are. So you can see here uh, now we have also local variable could be final. So you can actually uh, make this a bit more specific. Um, okay, uh, let's say from the documentation now, uh, if we Mm, what could we? Uh, let's run it. Let's see what we have from the documentation. Maybe we can then pick one. Um, comment required. Okay, so it says public method and constructor comments are required. Uh, okay, let's not pick this one. Class comment required. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's just pick this one. So comment required. So the comments are now uh, required. Okay, and then we execute this and we should get our violations. And here they are, let's find them. Uh, so we have our errors. Now let's say we want to fix one of these. So what, what, um, how can we do this? So like, uh, let's say this empty catch block. So this is, uh, we jump to this one and you can say, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, here we have an empty catch block. So we can say uh, system.out.print and then whatever, um, let's say, we are printing out a message. I don't know. This is a nice, not nice way to, to fix it, but not really a point. So what I would expect now is if I run this task again, that I don't get this empty catch block here. So if I run it again, I should not get that one. So let's look at the output here and we can see uh, that, yeah, it's not here. So it works. So we can actually get rid of the issues as we fix um, them one by one. And that's pretty much it what uh, what we have here. So we can configure it like that. So you can actually include the entire category or you can include specific rules from that category. But uh, let's say you want a um, bit more. Let's say you have, I don't know, you want 20 different rules here. So you would have 20 lines here in your uh, Gradle file and maybe this does not really look nice to you and then you want to configure them somewhere else. Luckily, PMD also enables us to do that. So we can uh, create um, a custom rule set. So our own rule set and just point to that one. And then within this rule set, include some rules. So what we're going to do here is in the resources, uh, let's say in the static folder, we're going to create a new XML file, name it something like, uh, I don't know, our rules XML, and then point to this one here. Let's do that. Okay, so here I am. Uh, I've created our rules XML inside of the resources static, um, and I've added some yeah some content to this file. This is what you can also find on the on the PMD page in the documentation. So an explanation how to create those rules. I'll link it down below. And now what we want to do is we want to apply these same rules, uh, but here. The way we would do this is what you can do is you can create a rule like this. You can say um, uh, rule and then it has a ref and this ref is pointing to um, a category so the same as what we had here so we can take this part basically and paste it in and this would be exactly the same thing as we we're doing before so let's uh, duplicate a few of these and then just uh, copy 
uh, these things from here. Okay, now I have copied all of these uh, rules that I needed, so that the one that have configured. Now I actually want to use this file and not this. So I'm getting rid of these because I don't need them anymore, uh, but I still need to provide a rule set. I need to, to point somehow with, to it. And the way that you would do that is you'd basically just point to this file that you have here. So the way we do this is we need to get to the root directory and then from the root directory just find where our file is and put it in here. So this would eventually look something like this. We have the, the root directory path and then we just have the source main resource aesthetic and then our rules XML. Um, running this task uh, should get us the same result as before so we should get the violations. And you can see here we still have 24 PMD rules violations uh, and the only way to get rid of them now is to actually fix them in the code or to disable the, the PMD. Um, yeah, this would be everything for this video. Hopefully you liked it and uh, you found it useful. Um, there are many more things you can do with PMD. You can collect some metrics, you can introduce your own custom rules. Um, this can be done um, either in the XML themselves or you can actually create some Java classes where uh, you would create those rules and similar is done with the metrics. If this is something that you guys would be interested in, uh, then drop me a comment and maybe we can make a video um, on that. But until then, uh, thank you for watching uh, and I will see you in the next one.